Hi beautiful people, I welcome you to another exciting episode of Talk to Be. It's Talk to Be baby. How are you guys doing today? I'm so happy to see you guys. I'm so happy to be here. I'm sure you guys are happy to see me as well, even though I can see you physically, but I know you're there watching me. Thank you guys for staying tuned. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you. Thank you for the love. It's been amazing. Thank you so, so, so much. And today, as usual, you know I brought a big fish. I brought somebody that I know a lot of you would have been wondering. <laughs> This man, we love him so much. Oh, he's a whole lot. I am so happy he's there. But before I introduce him, I'll go for a break. And when I'm back, I'll introduce my guest. Do not go away. Talk to be. Talk to be. Share your experience. All right, guys. Thank you for staying tuned. Like I said earlier, that I have my big brother my uh, senior colleague senior 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 daddy colleagues you know <laughs> you know is a lot of people's crush from maybe our childhood where we were young adults and this man has just been there ageless wonderful i know you love him so you guys should thank me for bringing our wonderful amiable yemi black oh, <laughs> oh okay Me, thank it's, you so much it's so nice to be here it's so nice to be My here God. i was supposed to be here the last time i'm I, so sorry about that i know i told um your people that unfortunately I had something to do i thought i'd make it but then when i saw that it was going to be too close i had to cancel but i'm here and i was like yes yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the love. I appreciate everything that you're putting into getting here today. Oh. It's not, it's not Wild easy. horses couldn't stop me. I said, I have to be here today. <laughs> if I had to ride horses on the way, my car stopped somewhere. I jumped on the bus. I jumped on the bike. Then I saw a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> God bless you. Okay, I mean, bless thank you, bless you so you. much for coming. All right. Let's get to the business of the day for a lot of because of a lot of people that are out there and even me that we want to know you're one at all that we've known you for years but yes we don't know you you know and i think that's so special so let's start from introducing yourself tell us about your background your upbringing let's get to meet you deep down okay so sir that's what we do on talk to be mm -hmm. we let it all out mm -hmm. we discuss ourselves we because we want people to learn from our stories because mm -hmm. i just realized that when we do some things as movies people mm -hmm. really think oh sometimes they're fiction sometimes they are really not real but they see us they don't really know so i would like for you to introduce yourself properly okay well my name is Jimmy black i come from ondo town in ondo state i'm um, so, from a child of um from a family of uh, five uh I'll, I'll make that seven including my parents uh, but my father decided to exit in 2020 um he ran away on the 14th of february you know yeah he ran away so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's six of us left i mean that's including my mother um mm -hmm. Uh, it's a rather close-knit family. Uh, my older ones are a bit older than myself, so I'm the last child that grew up like an only child because, I mean, a lot of my people just, you know, they graduated in the 80s and all that. So um, yeah, it was nice growing up in that environment. I like growing up in Undo Town. Because that's where I, formed, uh, I grew up. Most of my formative years are formed there. Um, in Undo Town? In Undo Town. Wow. I speak my language fluently. Um, I like that. You know, because a lot of people don't expect that I can. People don't even know that I can speak Yoruba. But I think that my Yoruba is very good and my Undo is quite very good because I was with my grandmother for a short while. Uh, she was ill, um, not like uh, she couldn't, she was incapacit incapacitated or anything, but she was a bit ill and I was the one around who could go help her out. So I learned a lot, learned to pound yam, learned to make um, certain kind of food <laughs> wow. while I was with her, you know. So it was just a nice experience growing up in that kind of rather organic community where it's not the way it is in Lagos now, where you mm -hmm. can't even talk to your next door neighbors. That's right. 
where you don't even know who they are or what they do. I grew up in a place where, you know, your neighbor was your friend, your family. You mm -hmm. knew what was going on with them. Uh, you shared, you cared. Sometimes, though, there was not a lot to eat at home. You could send your child to the neighbor's house and, and tell them, mm. you know, uh, uh, just please, you know, help out. And they can send a few things to you. You know, it's just really nice growing up at a time when humanity was rather more connected, you know, mm. at a point where people communicated uh, rather than talk to themselves, where people just reached out with their hearts, you know. Mm. So all those things have culminated in the person that you see now. So I'm more of a product of the old school, even mm. older than my real age, age. because uh, the people that I related with growing up and the experiences that I saw just made me realize that life is really, really a lot and life is nothing at the end of the day. Hmm. And so that brings me to what my father, when I was growing up, people would greet him and they would say, Baba Frenol, because he had a company, Frenol & Co. Okay. And when they greeted him, Baba Frenol, he would look at them and say, Bon, 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 si, a tirai. And I didn't know what that meant until I grew older and I started to think about it and I looked at his life. And that's the truth. Bon, 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 bon si, a feni ban tirai. Wow. Can you break that down for us? All right. So basically, it, it, it simply means that there is no issue with life except the ones you created by yourself. <laughs> so life is very simple. Life is very, very easy. Mm. Because as long as you're content with the things you have, you are happier than the man who has a lot but is not content with what he has. Mm. And happiness is key. Because at the end of the day, what are we doing? Life is not yours. The body you live in is not yours. The clothes you're wearing are not yours. The house you're living in is not yours. Because the house you're living in, even if you bought it, you've only paid rent till the end of your days. When you die, it becomes someone else. That's it. The, the, clothes you, the food you eat, when you finish eating, you'll go to the backyard, <clears throat> pass it out. Oof. At the end of the day, the body that you live in, one day you're going to live. The life that you have is not yours. It's Nothing not is yours. yours. You know what I mean, right? So it, it, life is so complicated and so easy. And for me, I look at it from both ways. I see it here, I see it here, and I choose the easy part. And that's why, uh, like you said, I'm not, um, I'm not out there. You know, for someone who's an entertainer. Mm -hmm. And that's by choice because my personalities are out there. When I'm not working, I'm in my house. Mm -hmm. I don't really like noise, so I don't go to parties. I don't really like noise, so I don't like going to clubs and stuff. I don't like uh, crowds as well. I don't like where too, there are too many people. It's very uncomfortable for me when I've been to one or two parties and the musician is shouting, yeah, me, or yeah, me, black. <laughs> They had black. But, yeah, but, um, it's, I'm, I'm very Yoruba, but I'm not a Yoruba. So my people like partying yes. and like grooving, but that's not my thing. So when I, it makes me feel really physically uncomfortable. You know what I mean, right? Uh, so yes. yeah, so that's a bit of the background. Yes, <laughs> a good one. Okay, so I'd like to know, is what's your surname? Is it black? Does it have anything to do with? Okay, so um, <clears throat> a, long, um, a long time ago, I, I, I've always been into arts and entertainment. Okay. Uh, sometime when people used to ask me, they would say, oh, you know, where did you get it from? And mom, my mom, when she was growing up, she liked to play, she liked to do plays in school, okay. you know, and she was always the princess or the queen or stuff, you know, my, my mom was really pretty. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess I thought I got it from her totally. And she's a really good singer mm -hmm. until I started taking stock and I realized that my dad had always been involved in it. My first of all, my father's a fantastic writer. So I got my writing abilities from him. Um, I like to sing as well. I mean, I've always loved music. I've always liked singing. And my father was so interested and in, invested in the arts that he actually owned the first Gemini cinemas in Nigeria. Oh. Yes, yeah, because my father, he was a Gemini. You know, the, the Zodiac was Gemini. So he had Gemini cinemas that he set up. It was a, it was a traveling cinema at the time. It was in the late 70s, uh, up to, until like the um, early 80s. Okay. You know, like mid 70s to, to mid 80s, you know what I mean? They had a, ro a traveling cinema. So he would go from community co to community showing his movies. He had a projector, the whole work. So at the time, the works of um, Baba Salah, the works of um, Ogunde, uh, some Chinese films, some Kind of, you know, that's what my father did. And I thought to myself, oh my God, my father owned a cinema. Wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. So that's it. So I think I got it from both sides, really. Um, and so uh, when it got to a point, I decided I was going to be a rapper. And trust me, I'm quite good at that. So I started writing and started getting into music and I wanted to, you know, make it, you know, 
uh, a thing. But it was before the time that music was big, you okay. know. So at the time, people expected you to be like a reggae artist or to sing juju or akbala fuji, you know what I mean. And I didn't have any talent for that really. So um, I thought about the name to give myself, and the first name that I came up with was um, I liked uh, Messiah because the the Messiah. yeah that's the name that I gave myself first because the message that I had for rap was not I never liked all those. Um, shake your behind or patty patty kind of things. Mm. I always preached positive messages, stop the violence, stop the drugs, fathers take care of your children, you know what I mean? Positive messages. Mm -hmm. So I thought Messiah would be given, like someone who's come to save mm. uh, the consciousness. But then I also thought about the backlash that would come from there, being as it may that we're very religious society. So mm -hmm. someone comes and calls them like, ah, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean, right? I so I told myself, you know what, I'm going to change it. So one day, I just looked through the Bible um, and I saw something at the top of a page in the Bible. It said, chronic stroke resurrection due. I can't remember what Bible. I just saw, that's what I saw. Chronic stroke resurrection due. And I'm like, oh, I like chronic stroke. Like, it's a stroke of something strong, you know, something. Mm -hmm. So I called, called myself chronic stroke. And then that was for a while. But then I didn't still, it didn't sit down with mm -hmm. me. And then one day I thought about it. I was like, okay, well, people don't realize where I'm from because of the way that I sound. Mm. And it just gets them a bit confused. But I'm a black man and I'm black enough to be black anywhere in the world. No matter how I think or talk. You know what I mean, right? So I called myself black enough. Wow. Yeah. So it was black enough. And then when I started acting... Um, I got some advice because at the time it was not very advisable to be too Yoruba. Mm, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, it yeah. was not advisable to be too Yoruba. So you had to find a way to appeal to the common. So I thought initially, my first thought was I was going to come become an actor. I'm going to call myself Yemi. Ooh. No last name. You know what I mean? I wanted it to be something that was familiar. So I say, who's the actor? Yemi? Yemi what? Oh, Yemi, just Yemi. You know what I mean? Just Rather, it. yeah. <laughs> you know, but then I thought, oh, that's my artist mind speaking. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, oh, you know, how about you just add the black to it? You know, so it's like Yemi black. Oh, amazing. So you <laughs> took off enough and then you just added the black. black yeah, Yemi. so it's Yemi black. You know what I mean? And then at the time, I was very black. <laughs> 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 because no, the worry. Lagos sun was not, it was very sunning. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the sun was very sunning. Sun uh, still very black. Exactly. And we love it like that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, sir. Um, okay, so um, you have told us everything, but you haven't told us where you got your accent from. Okay, so basically, um, for me, it's always been the knowledge of the fact that I would end up in, in entertainment. Okay. And so. At some point, I just told myself, um, okay, well, I'll call, it's a culmination of two things. Most of my father's contemporaries speak in a very, very proper way because they are mostly all um, educated in England. My father was educated in England, his friends were. So when they sit down, it's, it's a compendium of sorts. So you see these old men who are wearing Nagbada and Abitiaja. Mm -hmm. And you know they have Irukere and they have beads mm -hmm. and they're talking in 1954 when you were at the House of Commons, That's you know right. <laughs> they go, uh, yes. who be these ones? You know what I mean? <laughs> and next thing they flew was like, oh my god, you can see it. Well, can you can you can you know? So you're thinking, ah, the transition, what, what? Like the transitions are rather very dramatic. I like that because it's it's as a human being, I think that you have to be multidimensional. Even God is tripartite. God is Father, Son, is Holy Spirit. You know what I mean, right? You can't be one person because mm. then it gets boring. So I said to myself, I like this man because, I mean, that's my background. That's what I listened to growing up and that's what I heard. And I said, I'm going to be in entertainment and the language of entertainment, as it were, in the world at the moment is English, that's whether right. you want it or not. Mm. And if you're going to be here and you're going to be communicating to a, lot, to a large crowd, mm. you might as well learn to speak the a language properly and sound proper. So it was just um, a thought that I had and then I started um, going the path. So it was not, I mean, I, I was in England and all that, but it was not. Like so, you grew up so, in England? No, 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 I grew up in Underton. So We did sing Oh, yes. <laughs> no, no, I grew, I grew up, up, I grew up in Underton. I'm a Bondo boy, proper. I'm a Bondo boy, I'm a Bondo boy. 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 I'm a
So it was not because you grew up in England. No, no, no. It was because of the fact that, I mean, I had the background of the home that I'm from and also the fact that for me, it was a conscious effort. I knew that I was going to end up in entertainment. The best way to communicate here is English and the only way to do is to learn. So I just said, okay, so I'm just going to learn how to speak properly. I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I am inspired. All right, Uncle Yemi. So tell us at what point in your life did you now enter into the industry fully? Or let's say Nollywood now. Okay, so Nollywood fully for me was 2003. Um, I'd been doing a lot of stuff back and forth. I'd been doing, I mean, my music had been trying since uh, way back in the 90s, uh, 96, 97, came to Lagos to record some stuff, Unity and Creativity, um, um, Style Plus. I knew them way back, you know, we oh. used to, yeah, so I had to do one or two things together, you know, and so we came to Lagos to record. And, you know, that just didn't work at the time. So I took a back burner. And then 2003, I um, I shot my, you know, I'd been, I'd always been interested in movies, you know, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure that I wanted to do the Nollywood. Because at the time, you know, the frame of mind you're thinking, is this the way of the future? Would you rather go elsewhere and try for Hollywood? Mm -hmm. And I knew that I had a talent, you know. Okay. For me, the acceptance and the knowledge of my talent is not predisposed on on um, being haughty or being mm -hmm. uh, arrogant. It's just, it is what it is. My name is Yemi. So if you say, if I tell you that I have talent, I'm not trying to, pr I have talent. You I'm very do. talented. <laughs> so it, it is what it is. Exactly. So it is what it is. So I, th I thought about that. But then 2003, anyways, um, I was a part of a project. And it was rather very fictitious, the, the way that it happened. So this guy, Obi Asutule, of blessed memory. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he was in... Uh, Obi? Yeah. Asutule? Yeah. Oh, she. no, no, no. Oh. No, no, sorry. I. She is... She's, she. Please, please. <laughs> no, no, Obi, yeah. That's, Asutule? Yeah, Obi, yeah. That's um, Chico's friend, Chico Ejuro's friend. She's late. No, the, that's the that's the wife. The husband is Obi. Yeah, she I think I think Uche, too. I think Uche, I think the wife is Uche. Oh, okay, she's yeah. Uche, yeah, so yeah, yeah, the yeah. dark beauty. Yeah, yeah, oh my woman, god, yeah. I love that. So, um, you know, so they they came to uh, shoot a movie, and I I'd heard about it, and I said, okay, you know what, let me just audition and see how this thing goes. So I went over there, I went to uh, into the audition, and they called me in there. I can't remember, I think Frank or something. They so just said, oh Frank, I'm like. Mm -mm. He saying no Frank, <laughs> you know, and he said no, 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 you're Frank. I said I'm not Frank. So they called him like a guy, guy, come look at this guy. What's his? Ah, say Frank. I said no, uh, what the guy? I'm not Frank. And I said no, that you look exactly like the character wow. that we envisioned envi envi for this. You know what I mean? Because way back in the day, I used to wear cornrows. You know, you know, so I used to yes. weave my hair. Uh, yeah, exactly. I used to you know wear. I had long hair, so I would, I would weave it and all that. And so that's the image that they had for the character. Mm. So they gave me to read. I read, and they were wow, wow, they liked it. So I got the part. And after that, I liked the experience, you know, it was just nice being around that energy. That's when I met Kepi, you know, um, you know, all of us mingled and I liked it. So I went for another one and then, you know, after that's it, one thing led to another. I took another break for a couple of years in 2005, you know, I just said to myself, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my mind to it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I just put my mind to it fully, set my feet to the ground. And in a short while, things took off, you know, because before the end of the year, I got my first um, lead role. Mm. And everyone thought, ah, oh, you know, people usually do this nine years, ten years before they get the lead role. Mm -hmm. And then you just got yours on a platter of gold. And I'm like, well, he's not really a platter of gold. I mean, I'm talented. What would you say? <laughs> I got the talent. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. So that was how you started the... You have done um, a quiet... You've been... Oh, oh I, I'll say that you are in both parts the mm. yoruba part of mm. nollywood you do yoruba mm. you do english so what would you say is the difference now or would you pick an advantage from a particular sector uh, the only difference so far has just been um, about budgeting budgeting that's it because the talent is abundant on both sides mm. uh, the yoruba people have a pedigree of arts um, it's not something that we can run away from. We've always been artists. It's evident in the sculpture that our forefathers made that was told in by England. England. Uh, it's evident in the bronze casting that was way ahead of his days. Mm. It's evident in the textile industry that we have that is still rich. It's abundant in our you know, expressions of weaving of our hair and the way that we That's speak. Right. Art is in our DNA. DNA. So the only thing that um, that's now brings a deficit so to say in the modern practice of 
theatre, as it were, and, and um, movie making is just the difference in the budgeting. So you can be all that talented, but you still need the technology to bring your talent to the fore. You need to show the images that you're creating. You need to have a way to show, you know, to show the world that that's what's going on in your mind. So I think that's basically it. But I think apart from that, we actually tell rather very interesting stories, you know, because I realize that even though the budget may be rather dismal, People still love Yoruba movies. A lot. There are lots of fans of world of people who don't even speak a word of Yoruba. But right. they love the people, they love the, the, um, the stories for what it is, just the stories. Because stories are universal. You That's know right. what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Stories are universal. Right. You, can take, you can take a story from Sarajevo and tell it in Nigeria and it will resonate with the people. That's because right. the things that are talked about, greed, avarice, um, beauty, pain, love, all these things are universal. So if you call it love, you call it ife, you call it ehunaya, uh, uh, you call it anything, at the end of the day, it is the same thing, you know, and those emotions are universal. So yeah, that's the only difference. It's just being in the, in the budgeting. Hmm. So what do you think we can do? Aside, oh, you said this budget thing, yeah. yes. How do you think we can improve the industry? So basically, it's, it's, it's happening right now. There are people who have not only um, been in the grind for a long time, people who have also found a way to break into the next level. I mean, with movies like Jagun Jagun, movies like Orisha, mm -hmm. uh, with movies like Malaika, the movies are coming out, you know, and uh, people are beginning to realize that, you know, the, 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 the medium of communication in, movie, in movies is not English. Okay. No, is it Yoruba, is it French? It is actually pictures, pictures. and stories. Sorry. And right now, that's what's coming up. So people are beginning to realize that you can invest in a Yoruba film and get your money back mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. then they're seeing it and it's happening it's in happening. our times yes. so right now it's easier for you as a Yoruba producer to go meet someone and say look this is a project I have this is a story when you look at it based on the merit of that and based on the merit of the indices of the market at the moment you can say look I want to put this together I'm going to need like 80 million 100 million and with that trust me if you put a movie together now you know what you're doing you know the right people to get you can shoot a really beautiful story that's right and that's it the the Nollywood of the 2003 when you started yeah. and the Nollywood that we have now, what do you think has changed? Uh, well, the basically two strong things I would think of, of, of the cuff right now. The first thing is that there's a bit less, um, less discipline on the part of the actors. Oh uh, yeah, way back in the day, um, people were really dedicated to the tra to the craft. It's um, an actor prepares. It was less about the Instagram following. Hmm. Yeah, so it was less about the Instagram following. It was less about the clout. It was less about visibility. It was more about the craft. Ah. So the people that you had on set would be there, would have rehearsals before you even shot. It's hmm. not theater this is filmmaking mm. sometimes you're for a week before shoot you're rehearsing over and over again mm -hmm. people are there in time for the rehearsals if you had to climb a bike you would have to climb a bike mm. there's a time that i mean even jim would have to walk long distances you know mm. from this place to that there were times that i would jump on a bus you know, from uh, Magudo that I used to live in and go all the way down to Suleri. Sometimes it's not mm. even working. You have to cover some distance on foot because of the passion, because of the drive, because of the discipline. Mm. But this day, you know, that's not something that's really constant mm. because now there's a lot more money involved and there are younger people who grew up with a younger, uh, with a different mindset. mindset. So that is the first thing. The second thing is right now, the budget is uh, now available. Mm. You know, because if at the time people told us that you'd be shoot, people would be shooting movies for 100, 200 million, million. it would have been like, no. No, it's not, <laughs> like, possible. not possible. You know what I mean, right? Because yeah. I mean, then with 500,000, 450,000, you could still put something together, mm. you know, and you know, then it got, got more expensive as time went on. Mm. But now, the thing is, when you look at it, now, it, it, those are the two differences, you know. You'd think about the, the, di the discipline and the craft, and then, mm -hmm. but then there's more money, you know. Mm. So, but I mean, I'm not saying, that, that is not to say that every young person who's working now is uh, indisciplined. That's right. No, um, there are few pockets. Even some older people are quite indisciplined. Yeah. We had this conversation before we started, um, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, but um, that's there. So it w I, I would like it if people just understood that as, a, as an actor, 
when you they do shakara for your producer, it don't make sense. I know, get because your producer is your employer. <laughs> You know what I mean, right? When we work in the fold, you're working with people that you work with all the time. You're working with... In fact, honestly, I don't see why any actor should make shakara for anybody. Because the truth is, when you see people outside, those are the people that buy your product. And the day they stop buying your product, That's you're it. back to nothing. nothing. Nobody. You know what I mean, right? So it's just nice to be nice, you know, all through. Just be, be there, be good at what you do and then just be professional you know i mean well, you're human of course you'll have moods and stuff but just be good before we started the show we're talking about time wasting with people lateness and all what does that mean to you disrespect a lack of respect for self and lack of respect for the person you're dealing with so mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't realize that the things that we do the not only affect other people, it affects the way people think about us, the way people perceive us. So if you ask me to be here at a certain time and I don't get here like an hour later mm. and I don't make reparations for it, no apologies, no, there's no excuses. It's not, you may not say anything, but you have, you have a certain view of me that's not mm -hmm. really, you know what I mean, right? Because that, that's disrespectful to you. So you and by that, I'm disrespecting myself, that's you know? Right. Because... Uh, it's quite unfortunate, but it's very, very predominantly Nollywood. Um, 2006, I think. No, sorry, 2005. I was shooting with um, Steph Nora Okiri. Okay. I was working with another actor. Of course, I'm not going to mention his name just because we're nice people. And um, at the time, he was more established, you mm -hmm. know, and I was just you know, cutting my teeth. So we were asked to be at a certain place on the island at 9 o'clock on Sunday. 8 o'clock on Sunday. I was there, 8 on the dot. Um, it was an eatery. In fact, they, they, I opened with them, you know. Uh -huh. So I sat down and waited and I waited and I waited. For the same people who asked me to be there, 8 o'clock, they didn't get there until about 10.30. So I'd been there for like two hours so and a half. Anyway, so they came in there. There was no, there was no acknowledgement of my time. It was just, oh, okay, yeah, come, come, let's go. Because I was going to, I was going to travel with the production bus. So... I got in there and we got to the next location. I was wait quite waiting. I was in in that oh no, not this it was end two thousand five. I was um you know yeah, end two thousand and five. I was um you know, I was just waiting in the car. Wait for someone to acknowledge and say something. No one said. At the end of the day, this other guy comes around twelve thirty. He's in his car, there's music <laughs> <laughs> then he comes there like you know all that hey yo Afa now the PMQ like ah boboni they give him um, some imported biscuits and gave him some drinks because ah I know it's yo and I saw you day and I just felt so small and so mm. so bad I I struggle for the words because. How do you reward bad behavior like that? Someone mm. comes at 12.30 for 8 o'clock call. He holds everyone. And you welcome him with open arms. And someone was there at the time and there was no acknowledgement, you know? Mm. So those things have happened over and over and Are over again. Are you saying again. we as industry, we encourage such behavior? Um, a lot of times when people ask you to be at certain meetings, industry people ask you to be at certain meetings at a certain time, and you get there at that time, the image they have of you is, is someone who's not busy. Mm. So, mm, it's not busy. If you foresee, you did mm. walk, you got no work home, you just wait small. You know what I mean, right? Because, I mean, come on, how does a busy person make time? And that's a Nigerian mentality. It is. It's not anything to do with how busy you are. It's about how much respect you have for yourself and the and next person. That's I it. feel that some people just do this deliberately. Of like course. I told you the other time. It's deliberate. Somebody said, they have to wait for me. Yeah. And I was like, why? If it's an event that you're going for, there's something, about, there's something called being fashionably lit. As an entertainer, you don't want to be the first person there, oh, in all honesty. So you're thinking an hour after, 30 minutes after. In Nigeria, maybe two. Because I've been to an event last, um, I think, the big, first of this, of this year. There was an event there, a big event by a big comedian, you know. And it was built for, I think, s six or seven o'clock. 
I don't I think this, I'll get there until 10 p.m. I got I'm there seven thirty. Eh? The event didn't kick off until way after midnight. Yes, no. So I thought to myself, why say six when you know it's twelve? <laughs> because for someone like me, if you say six, I, I want everything in me wants to be there at six. But I'm just going to push myself to be there at six, as in normally before now. If you ask me to be to be somewhere at a meeting, I'm there fifteen minutes earlier. But I'm just going to be around the area. So I know that I'm not uh, going to be caught in traffic. So that, <laughs> I'm, 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 you know, because I got here 10 on the dot, like, it's, like yes, on the dot. Yes. But for me, is I just get near the area and wait so that you can make the time. That's how you show respect. Please, Uncle Yemi, have you been to <laughs> African party, Nigerian party, even abroad? Uh, well, I'm not if a party person. Part, if you're inviting me for a party, <laughs> you're on your own, no? See. I'll come. In fact, I'm getting there at the time there is no food anymore. Exactly. I don't even mind. I don't have to sit. <laughs> I don't care. Have you been to parties abroad in UK, in US, in the US? Nigerian parties. Nigerian mean? parties. Yes. They say six o'clock. They're not starting until eleven p.m. Yes. It's worse. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's that indiscipline. It's just yeah. rather very. It, it's we're proud of it. Calling Nigerian time, mm -hmm. you know, but it's not something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. And then. When when you speak against things like this, you're a lone voice in the wilderness because we're like, oh. we think they worry I'm safe. Now only him, so I just keep quiet. I think go before I never like party. You know? <laughs> so when you invite me for a party, I'm not uh, uh. gonna come. <laughs> 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 you know, that's it. <laughs> okay, so I I would like to ask this year. I saw one of your videos when you were saying that um, in the days of King David, you know, they cheated even with women who are well covered up. You spoke about King David, um, King Solomon. Solomon, and all. So now that if we see what's in your eyes, so. Hmm. <laughs> so now, my hmm. question... <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah. So my question is, are you saying women, we are the reason men cheat? Okay, so that's a rather complicated situation right there mm -hmm. because it's a question that goes into biology, question that goes into uh, society, question that... Okay, so there's this argument that men are hardwired to be promiscuous. Um, Why? Whether or not we are admitted is the truth um, because of the fact that the way nature made man is to disperse seed there's something called the continuity of the species and that's why even god says go ye forth and multiply and in okay. all honesty was he speaking to the the only the man it was speaking to men and women okay but everyone has their own responsibility when you look at animals animals have keep herd, like a whole herd of animals there's one male that's that's mating with all all the rest most of the time that's how it is they gather this woman and they mate with the rest of them and it's, that's how it is in nature. And the drive, the drive to do that in man is very high. Uh, the only thing is that you, le you need to learn to, to discipline yourself and subjugate those feelings. But the drive is there. Whether you're a pastor, whether you're a mam, unless you want to lie to yourself, the drive is there. Now, women may make it a bit, um, a bit harder to, to keep that discipline because of a certain kind of dressing. Now, once again, discipline is paramount. Mm -hmm. The fact that a woman dresses a certain way does not mean that you have to approach her in a certain way, but it does increase your chances of wanting to approach her in a certain way. Mm -hmm. I might say something, you're really seeing this on your lojo. Mm -hmm. So you look at someone and they're dressed in a corporate and a, a decent way. You may, I mean, you still appreciate the curves and everything, but it's, it's a, it is a, a sensual, um, sensual situation as opposed to a sexual situation. Now someone else is wearing something that's showing the bomb, the bomb is wiggling, they're probably not wearing a bra, and you know <laughs> what I mean, right? Exactly. All those things make a man feel a certain way. And in all honesty, some people have discipline, some people don't. And we need to un also understand what you put out and what you get. So if you put someone who doesn't have discipline in a certain frame of mind, you need to realize that you have a bit of responsibility. Just the same way that you would look at a man. I've been in relationships where I've been pushed to the wall. And I mean, not just pushed to the wall, pushed through the wall, but I've never hit a woman before. I'm very proud of myself that way. Yeah, I've never, I will never hit a woman. Man of you know? the <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. You know, but I mean, <laughs> that's, I, that's from my father, from my personality. My father had a really, really quick temper. He was the kind of guy who would jump in that undoman or you ready to fight anytime. <laughs> I was you know what I mean? <laughs> but the thing is, 
He was always respectful to my mom mm. with everything that he messed up with, with everything that all his, you know, temper and everything. I never saw him even yell at my mom in 60 years of marriage. Not even, I was wrong. Never one time. Wow. You know what I mean, right? So for me, it's I, I've never yelled at a woman. I can't be the woman. I've been pushed. My clothes have been torn at some point. But you know what? For me, it's not something I can do. It's not something I can ever do. But now we're going to issues of women who do things like that to men. Not every man is like me. And not every man has my personality. So if you're willing to tear a man's shirt and slap a man, you should be ready to be slapped back. Because don't say, ah, men should not do that. Women should also have enough sense not to do that. So women should have enough sense not to dress in a certain way if we don't want to be approached in a certain way. That's it. <laughs> so we are the one causing you people. Uh, not really, but I'm just see. saying that you, you exacerbate the situation. Uh, there's fire already. The fire is just there. They not carry petrol and just be speaking around the fire. Yeah, you know? Yeah, uh, why is this fire not even burning more? <laughs> Uh -uh, so if it's just fine, if it's just petrol now, <laughs> the petrol is just going on its own. Yeah, okay, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, I have like two more questions and I'll let you go. One is a bit personal mm. and one, so I, I'm going to ask the personal maybe later, before you leave, Shah. No, you but go. let me ask this. I like to ask, you're one person that I've, I've known even from afar. You are a Christian. You have kept her teeth. You know, you you don't hide it. You don't seem to you know you every time you have the opportunity to talk about Christ, to talk about God, you're always talking about it, which is very good for a man of your status. Now, as a Nollywood actor, because a lot of people do not think you can live a Christian life in this kind of industry what's your take on that life itself is bad enough it's hard to live any kind of um any kind of disciplined life and let's not call it christian or muslim or anything just try to be disciplined it's really hard mm -hmm. because it, it's cold out there man you know what i mean I there's so many things there's so many input that come into the mind so many people that will reach out to you and say things and in all honesty no one is a saint um, I do not purport to be one. I'm a human being um, who's prone to mistakes. Um, and I don't, that's why I don't like to be a role model. But so I'm, you're my role model. I'm like, wow. I, for role models, I'm not sure. You, you, can, you can emulate me certain things, but don't put me on a pedestal. Right. Because the thing is, the day that I fall off the pedals in your eye, it will affect you negatively. That's why mm. for me, I don't do the same thing. Human beings are human beings. If the Pope does something that's wrong, well, he's a human being. If a big pastor does something, he's a human being. You know what I mean, right? Mm. And God himself gives us a chance to, to, to fall into grace, which is we try to be you know, good. But once in a while, if something happens, God is giving you the chance to say, you know what, I understand that you're human mm -hmm. and nature will not let you. So coming back into the conversation, it, it's not ex especially harder in Nollywood. The only thing, the only difference is with women in Nollywood is, is harder because whether you want or not, there are going to be people who want you. And for any young actor, what I always tell them is, if you put he goat inside television and he appear for five films, some women will still write letter to the DM of the he goat. Mm. So it's never about you. Mm. Because these people don't even know you. That's right. So some person saw a role that I played um, and they reached out to me and said, Oh, you're so romantic. You're so. <laughs> and after, I just laughed and I said, you don't know me. He said, oh, no, but I like the way you are. You were just so soft-spoken. Like, that character, I was paid to be that person. You don't know the real Amy Black. So I'm flattered that you recognize my talent. Mm -hmm. But I'm not silly enough or egotistical enough to think that you like me. Mm -hmm. You don't like me because you don't even know me. You when like you know me that. and you like me, then I'm flattered because you like me for what I am. Mm -hmm. What if I fart in my sleep? What if I snore like a pig? What if I'm very rude? What if I'm a snob? You don't know those things. You've only seen what I was paid to do. Some other person saw something else. I was with, um, I was way back in the day. I showed this movie with Iniedo and this guy had seen it. In the movie, Ine 
pushed me and she beat me and she did everything. I was just a cool, calm guy. So I came with his friends. Ah, this guy, even though another woman just they beat you, he put pushed my head back. Like, ah, nah, for you, strong man, big man like you, and I just they beat you anyhow. In spot time, now she pushed you, she slapped you that day, and you, you, you just they look like say, so you don't know anything. He said, I look, he beat you, man, like that. Well, he pushed me back and forth for almost um, about five minutes. I, I took it in. I was laughing. At some point, I just grabbed this man's wrist. Mm. I led him to the backyard. He was, was with two friends. We went to the backyard. I told him, I said, guy, see that film when you watch? Not film. I'm <laughs> person when they said that film, nobody this person when they are. Yeah. I say, in all honesty, if I beat you here, I swear your two friends go run leave you. He was looking at me. I said, you know, normally your friend go, see the way I go take beat you, the way they go see him, they go run leave you. <laughs> he was looking look at me like this. I said, so guy, calm down. Calm down. I went back to the place. Less than two minutes, he and his friend, pew, they ran away. He, because he now realized that in honesty, he had seen a different part. Mm. So people who, women who would come at you mm. to make your life, you know, like that, you have to just realize it's not about you. So when you have that in your mind, it's easier for you to keep to the straight and narrow. Of course, we're human. Of course, we may fall. But thank God for Jesus and thank God for grace. Mm, <laughs> I know. Thank God for grace. Yeah. Okay, so that would take me to maybe my last question because I'm, I'm trying to let you go. You Actually, go. even though I feel like we should continue <laughs> this discussion. Okay, so I want to open it up because mm. I know that there are, we've talked about a lot of things. Yeah. We didn't talk about your marriage. We yeah. didn't talk about your relationship. Yeah. And I don't want hmm, the Kiniweya, you know, people out there <laughs> thinking that, oh, Mr. Uh, Black is single, he's married, we don't know. And they just start, you just be seeing our DMs. That's what we know how to do best. So please tell us about your. Are you married? Okay. We don't. We barely know anything about you. The, um, not when. When uh, okay. So I chose to be quiet about yeah. um, about my life, really, mm. because I think that the most interesting thing about me to people who are outside of a certain parameter mm. should be about my work. Mm. You know what I mean, right? My personal life has been very personal, and um, I'm not going to stop being personal about it now. So yeah, um, there's a lot of. Questions that need to be answered, and next time, watch out for part two. We'll answer this. One. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll let you go. All right, before you go, I'd like you to say a word or yeah. two to your fans out yeah. there who really, really love. Mm. I'm one of those actually, so you. I really appreciate Thank your you. work. Thank and you. I know that a lot of people, I'm sure one, once people see these clips, and they're going to be like, Wow, where did like, you get them? You know, it takes, and I really love that about mm. you. I, I that takes a lot of of work mm. a lot of you know discipline to be who you are mm. now with mm. all the fame with being there for a long time and mm. then you're still able to keep your private life mm. private you we know you but we don't know <laughs> you, you know so please say something to them all right guys thank you so very much this is yemi black here um it's really very um humbling to be in this position to be here after all these years to be loved to be appreciated to be accepted by you to be supported you know through all the end of us the ups and downs the mistakes the good works the goofs and yet you guys are still here it's really really humbling i appreciate it it's really 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 um, warms my heart you know to be able to reach out to you and just thank you i thank you for all the years i thank you for all the support and t thank you because trust me uh like they say in japan Ashe meyebolakuni. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot that's gonna be <laughs> there's a lot that's gonna be happening right now. Uh, right now is a time that you know that the the that you will get to understand me better. Uh, my talent, as it were, as a writer, as a composer, as a singer, as a rapper, as as you know, as a content creator. This is a time that you're gonna even be introduced to other parts of Yemi Black. Thank so there are different shades of black, and you see them all very soon. Okay. Thank you for the years. Thank you for the support. I appreciate that. Okay, so <laughs> before you go, I'll yes, also yes. like to ask because i don't like it where i'm sure people have learned a lot but i usually ask this question and i always want it to be like a take home for yeah. everybody what has life taught you personally so that you want people to learn from in all honesty we started with this and we're going to end with it mm -hmm. life is very simple mm. what life has taught me is nobody is going to live this life alive Mm. 
So whatever it is that you think is so important to you, your house, your wife, your children, your family, whatever it is is important to you today, when you're gone, it won't matter. Hmm. The only thing that's going to matter is how did you live your life? How did you impact other human beings? How good and kind were you? How generous were you to other people who needed? How much of your time did you give? That's all that's going to matter. Possessions and all those things, it won't matter. So please, whatever you do, try to be kind to at least one person every day. Mm. Start from there. Before you know it, it'll be easier for you. In your thoughts, in your mind, in your gestures. Thank you. All right, guys. <laughs> I think that's a big take home for me as well. Try to be kind to at least one person in a day. It won't cost you anything, though. You will have peace of mind, and you'll be happy with yourself, too. Thank you so much, Uncle Yemi, for coming on the show. I am so happy to have you here. I've learned so much from you. And please, I'm going to call you back. Yes. I'll be more than honored to come to be back here. It's been a great conversation, so, yeah, we'll have it more. <laughs> uh, okay, me, this yes, is, I don't like anybody coming on the show Aww. without getting something. Aww. I know it's small, but Aww. please. Uh, like they say, um, <laughs> it's a uh, any uh, tell me to talk to me. Uh, I was expecting that one to say like this. <laughs> Thank you so very much. You're welcome. All right, guys. This is where I'll be drawing the curtains. I'm sure that you've learned a lot. If you're yet to subscribe to this channel, kindly do. So, like, come your way next week. Do not forget in whatever thing you're doing, put God first, be determined, and stay focused. I love you guys, and God bless you all. Bye. Talk to B. Share your experience.